Recently, we got some really big news and we just had to talk about it. Gigabyte and MSI have announced that their DDR5 motherboards are going to support up to 192 gigabytes of RAM. The reason that this is such a big deal, you may have noticed that 192 is not in fact a power of two. Historically, RAM has only been available in binary numbers. So, you know, we've had four, eight, 16 gigabyte modules, and more recently, 32 gigabytes have become available. But soon we are going to be seeing 24 and 48 gigabyte modules. Now, this is a surprisingly big deal for the kind of workstations that we build, not just because we're going to be able to add in more RAM. Most notably, we have found, and this is pretty consistent with what we've seen online from other testers as well, when you run two modules of DDR5, you can get much closer to the stated XMP than you would be able to with four modules. It overclocks a lot better when you have two modules, and that's why you sometimes see like really high-end overclocking motherboards that only have two slots rather than four. Now, a problem that we've encountered with that, you know, sometimes you just need more memory. Even our more affordable Apollo systems, uh, which are our entry-level systems, they ship with no less than 32 gigabytes of RAM. But the thing with 32 gigabytes of RAM, you know, we're using two sticks of 16 gigabytes. You know, you can upgrade to 64 gigabytes in the future, but the maximum of 64 then also comes with the downside that you would then be running at a lower frequency when you do upgrade. When you need more than 64 gigabytes of RAM, it's the same kind of story. Your only option then would be to go with 128 which comes with the downside that you're running at a lower speed. So these in-between sizes could be pretty amazing for performance, and it's kind of in the same way as when we discussed the RTX A2000 and the gap that it filled between NVIDIA's other workstation cards around it. You could either get the cheap and not very powerful Quadro T2000, or then if you wanted any more power than that, you'd have to go with the A4000, which costs about twice as much as the A2000. Really added a lot of value for, you know, like solid edge and solid work systems. You can take a look at our video on that, it's in the description. These in-between RAM sizes seem like they're gonna add a ton of value because what it means is that you can get greater capacity you can get higher speeds, and it would cost less. They're gonna be fantastic for our mid-range systems. Having 48 gigabytes of RAM would give you a lot of headroom for software like Revit and Inventor. You know, if you wanna edit higher resolution video in DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro, you'd be able to do that, and you'd even be able to use like VFX and stuff, and you'd still have some headroom on top of that. It represents quite a bit of value over 32 gigabytes, and it's quite a bit more future-proof too. Of course, it's a similar story with 96 gigabytes of RAM for stuff like twin motion projects. If you're using like high resolution, higher quality in those kinds of programs, then it can eat up a lot of RAM. Sometimes you need more than 64 gigabytes of RAM, but you don't quite need more than 100 gigabytes of RAM. 96 gigabytes really does sound like it's quite a sweet spot. So what we'd then like to do is for our very high-end twin motion systems and the like, we could then be using 6,000 megahertz RAM and above, depending on what the customer is looking for. It could even be really useful for our entry-level systems. You know, if you're using like AutoCAD, Revit LT, stuff like that. We found that 16 gigs of RAM just isn't enough anymore. So 24 gigs, if we use a single module of 24 gigs, they'd get great performance. And in the future, they could upgrade to 48 gigabytes. So these uh, in-between sizes seem like they really would be fantastic. So this has just been a quick overview about the implications of these in-between sizes. We really can't wait for the RAM to actually become available so that we can do some testing and see if it's everything that we think it's going to be. If you have any questions or comments about this, then of course leave it in the comments below and we'll respond to it as quickly as possible. And thanks so much for watching.